Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number four from the February March 2020 paper four variant two from the Cambridge 9709 mechanics paper. This is A levels. Um, it says a cyclist travels along a straight road with constant acceleration. So there's a key word here which will help us understand or you know, should trigger for us in our minds. Okay, we're going to be using the, the equations of constant acceleration, the Suvat equations, that should be in our head already. He passes through points A, B and C. The cyclist takes two seconds to travel along each section, each of the sections A, B and B, C and passes through B with a speed of 4.5 meters per second. The distance A, B is four-fifths of the distance B, C. Okay, so basically he's traveling along the road. Okay, and I have straight road so here's point a and it says the distance a b is four fifths so b a b is a shorter distance than b c we don't know those distances okay but it's slightly shorter than b c all right so at time equals zero seconds he's going through a at time equals two seconds he's going through b and at time equals four seconds if you're considering from uh, starting from a he's going through c okay he is passing through b with a speed of 4.5 meters per second and the whole of the journey he's going with a constant acceleration all right um that is the only information we have apart from we can say the distances so let's say the distance from a to b um is four fifths of b to c. let's say b to c whoops second fix that let's say the distance from b to c let's say we call that x that means the distance from a to b is going to be four fifths of x which can say 0 0.8 x we could just you could call it you know that's one way of doing it we could call the whole distance x and then split it into ratios well this is fine right that's x that's four fifths of x four fifths is 0 0.8 okay so we've got all the information in this diagram it's really important in this type of questions to have very clear types of diagrams when you're reading something like this and you can't picture what's happening it makes it that much more confusing for you so making a clear diagram sometimes will make you see exactly what to do all right now, in these kind of questions now, because it says constant acceleration, in my mind is I'm going to be using the Suvat equations. Now, the equations are given to you in the formula sheet. However, there are some equations, or there's one particular equation which I'm thinking I'm going to, going to be using now, which you should know and add to your formula sheet, which I'll tell you about in a mo moment, because it's really useful in certain situations like this one. Now, what we want to do is we want to try to be able to use the values that we know which are like the times and the this speed at the point B, okay, as much as possible in the situation that we have. Now, I'm going to set up one equation which describes what happens between A and B. All right, and I'm going to make another equation what describes what's happening between B and C. All right, now I'm not going to describe between A and C because I don't have, any, I don't have any information about A or C in terms of the speed. At B, I know its speed. So I know that the final speed of the particle as it's passing going from a to b is 4.5 and the initial speed as it's going from b to c is also 4.5 so i can use this in both uh you know sets of values that i'll have so i'll have more information all right so if i'm considering from a to b it's like all right we're starting at this is where we're starting so this is going to be where my, what my u is and what's happening here is going to be what my v is so let's write suvat first suvat equations s u v a t the Suvat equations. Okay, so let's have a look at the situation that we have here. From A to B, the S, we've called it 0.8x. From A to B. The U, we don't know. I'm going to call it UA. We don't know what it is. The V is the velocity at the final velocity at B, which we know is 4.5 meters per second. A, we have to find. And T, between A and B is 2 seconds. So that's the information we have about A to B. Now let's look at B to C. So now we're starting at B. We're starting at this point. All right, so we have S, U, V, A, and T. So in this case, our S is going to be X. We'll call X the distance between B and C. U is the speed at B, which we know is 4.5. So the, the, the V here becomes the U here because we're considering now from B to C. We're starting at B, ending at C. So U is 4.5. That's the initial speed at B. V is the final speed, okay, 
which is going to be the velocity at C, which we don't know. Okay, we don't know what it is. And A is the acceleration, which is the same acceleration all the way through. So this A and this A are the same. And the time, now be careful here. The time is not four seconds. The time is four seconds if we consider from A to C. The time here is two seconds. Why? Because we're considering from B to C. So that time is two seconds apart. All right? So be very careful about uh, your values. You have to be very, very clear about your values of SUVAT when you're dealing whether it's you know, vertical motion under gravity, whether it's this type of question, you should be very, very clear about your directions and where you're, where you're starting, where you're ending. It's very, very important. Okay, so now we have the situation where we can put the values in to equations. So here I'm going to be dealing with S and V and A and T. Okay, and here I'm going to be dealing with S and U and A and T. Now for this one, we know the equation S equals ut plus a half a t squared now for this one here there is another equation which we can use which is not in the formula sheet but it's vt minus a half a t squared it is also one of the equations of motions which is derived from okay what we learned in you know uh basically when you when you derive the equations of motion you can also derive this this equation also there's two different equations that you can make, like similar to each other. One is ut plus a half a t squared. The other one is vt minus a half a t squared. All right. And if you, I'll just give you a brief explanation of it. If you have like your velocity time graph, okay, um, this part here is ut and this part here is a half a t squared. So you want to find the total area that's a half a t squared plus ut. Or you can think about it as, the whole area, the whole area is vt. Okay, the whole area is v times t. This is u times t. Okay, so the whole area is vt. Okay, and you take away this area, so it's going to be vt minus a half a t squared. This area is half a t squared, so is that. So you do vt, which is a whole rectangle minus the, the whole rectangle minus this triangle, so it's going to be vt minus a half a t squared and here you're going to have ut which is this area of this triangle this rectangle plus that triangle that that rectangle plus that triangle so this will be ut plus a half a t squared this will be vt minus a half a t squared it gives the same area okay under the curve which is the distance traveled so one of them is thinking in terms of adding this triangle to this rectangle the other one is thinking of taking away this triangle from the big rectangle they both give the same thing in the end so these two formulae here can be used. The formula sheet only has this one. It doesn't have that one. Um, but this is one of them I teach to my students uh, that you should know. All right. So um, it really makes life easier in questions, especially like this one. So now we have S equals 0.8x. V equals 4.5. So 4.5. T equals 2. Minus a half times A, what we have to find. And T is 2. So you're going to have 2 squared. And for this one, you're going to have S as X, U is 4.5, T is 2, plus this time a half times A times 2 squared. Okay, so you'll end up with this equation saying 0.8X equals 9 minus, that's going to be, that cancels with that, 2A, a half times 4 is 2. And here you're going to have X equals 9 plus, that's going to be, plus 2A. So we have two equations. We have 0.8x equals 9 minus 2a and 0.8x equals 9 plus 2a. So we want to find a. All right. Now, we could find um, x first by adding these together or we could find a. If we want to find a, so let's, let's do this. Let's take equation 1 and equation 2 because we want to find a first. Let's um, subtract the two equations. If we subtract the equations, I have... Equation 2 minus equation 1. This will become 0. This will become... Um, one second. That's not, that's, there's a mistake here. My bad. One second. What was it? 0 0.8. This is supposed to be saying x. Just let me fix that. Um, okay, start. So now we have two equations in X and A. The X is the same, the A is the same. They're both referring to the same thing. X is referring to this distance over here, 
and A is referring to the acceleration which is constant all the way through. So now we can try to solve for, uh, we want to find A first. I mean, what I would do, to be honest here, was I would find what uh, X is first because it's easier because we already have A to have uh, in terms of the same coefficients. We have 0.8X equals uh, 9 minus 2A and here we have X equals 9 plus 2a if i add the two equations together equation one and two if i add the two equations together i end up with um 1.8x equals um that is going to give me 18 and the a's will cancel therefore x equals 18 over 1.8 so x is going to be 10 meters all right and therefore we can say for example here x equals 9 plus 2a so 10 equals 9 plus 2a. So 1 equals 2a. Therefore, the acceleration is 1 over 2, which is 0 0.5 meters per second squared. So there's the answer for part A of this question. Okay, the acceleration of the cyclist is 0 0.5 meters per second squared. And now for part B. It says find AC. So let's just quickly go back here. AC is what? AC is the total distance. So the total distance from here to here, okay, this is pretty easy now because we already found the X, didn't we? So the total distance here is 1.8X all the way from A to C. A to C is 1.8X. 0.8X plus 1X, 1.8X. So therefore we can say that AC um, is equal to 1.8X which is 1.8 times 10. We already found x equals 10 in part A. So that's going to be 18 meters. And that's it. So we already did the work for it really in part A. Okay, when we found what x was. So there we have the answer. And that completes this question. Okay, and that's it basically. Very simple actually. But one of the things that makes your life easier is knowing this equation which you should add vt minus a half at squared vt minus a half at squared is one of the equations of the motion that's important for you to to know it will help you with questions like this a lot there are probably other ways of doing this okay um using another equation of motion all right um, maybe combining two of them together or something but i think this makes your life that much easier okay so that concludes question number four other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in this area over here at the end of the video. Other questions from the, the um, topic of SUVAT or constant acceleration in the playlist over here. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and you can watch a video here. In fact, I'll put a link here to my playlist from Edexcel, constant acceleration questions. So you get exposure to uh, different types of questions where I have answered a lot of questions in Edexcel board. So you can see those and you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link. Thank you for watching and see you soon.